Today's episode is brought to you by Card Kingdom, and for a limited time, all pre-orders of $25 or more with a Modern Horizons booster pack or box will get a sheet of stickers featuring not just the Card Kingdom logo, but some of your favorite modern decks for free. Hello everyone, it's Seth. Probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Much Brew About Nothing. So this week, we don't quite have Modern Horizons yet. Came out too late in the week to do it for this episode, but we're going to be hitting up Modern Horizons hard starting very soon. But for this week, we are heading to Modern to play a deck... I'm calling Karn's Dice Factory. This is kind of a mashup of a bunch of different decks. We've played Astro Corticopia in Everflowing Chalice, put charge counters on it, go crazy decks before. Also, Thopter Foundry Sword of the Meek, and just for fun, Karn the Great Creator to tutor up some locks. So a little bit of everything mashed together. So this one comes from the Nobodies, who dig it to a 5-0 finish in a league on Magic Online. So congrats to Nobodies on a really unique deck. And a quick reminder before we break down Karn's Dice Factory for Modern. If you enjoy this deck, and you enjoy Much of Brew in general, it would be sweet of you. If you could take a second, click that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So let's talk Karn's Dice Factory, and this is a Karn deck, and Karn has been taking off in multiple archetypes in Modern, and basically the power of Karn is sort of twofold. First off, it allows you to grab silver bullets from your sideboard. Uh, uh, sorcerer spyglasses and ensnaring bridges and powerful things in specific matchups. However, it also, if you have enough mana in a stable enough board, just lets you grab a Mycosynth Lattice and essentially just close out the game. Grabbing it from the sideboard, opponent can't activate any abilities, all their stuff is artifacts, which means they can't tap lands, they can't activate planeswalkers or artifacts or enchantments or creatures. Maybe they can attack you down if they have a big enough board, but other than that, it is basically like, you can't play magic. So, that is one of the parts of the deck. However, to make this plan work, you need fast mana. Karn is 4 mana, Lattice is 6 mana, so the decks that find the most success with Karn are decks that can make a lot of mana. So we are doing this in a sort of unique way. Rather than playing Tron Lands or Arbor Elves or whatever, we have Everflowing Chalice and Astral Cornucopia, which look like really inefficient ram spells. Everflowing Chalice, basically for 2 mana, it's a mana rock. If you have a bunch of mana, you can multi-kick it and make it better. Astral Cornucopia, 3 mana to get a mana rock, 6 mana to have a tap for 2 mana, but we're not actually planning on casting these for mana. We're cheating on this a little bit. What we are usually doing is casting these sometimes X1, but often for 0 mana, and then using Surge Node and Core Tapper to put counters on it. Surge Node just starts with 6 counters at 1 mana. You can tap it, pay 1, remove a counter, put it on something else. So basically... In the end, that's going to be six counters moving from Surge Node to Everflowing Chalice. And then Core Tapper is kind of like a weird ritual. You can sack it to put two charge counters on an artifact. So it costs two mana, but immediately gets us back two mana if we can put the counters on Cornucopia or Chalice. And if it sticks on the battlefield we can just tap it every turn and build up some counters that way before we actually sack it to get those last two counters. So that's our fast mana plan to get to Karn, to get to Lattice, etc, etc. We also have a couple of weird backup plans. One Clock of Omens, which is kind of hilarious. Uh, it doesn't really do much of anything. Let's just tap two artifacts to untap an artifact. Basically, once we have a bunch of counters on an Everflowing Chalice or on a Astro Cornucopia, then we get Clock of Omens, tap Clock of Omens and some other random artifact Effect, to untap our artifacts with a bunch of charge counters to make even more mana, maybe play Karn and Lattice in the same turn, Mox Opal, because we got a bunch of artifacts, then we have our backup plans for winning the game. So we can lock people with Karn, we can also go infinite with Thopter Foundry Sword of the Meek. Uh, with Thopter Foundry Sword of the Meek, you can basically sack Sword of the Meek to Thopter Foundry to make a token and gain a life as many times as you have mana, because when the token comes into play, Sword of the Meek going to come back from the graveyard, equipping that token, so then you sack it again, 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 with all the mana we can make with our ever-flowing chalices and astro cornucopias, this can amount to a lot of tokens very, very quickly, along with life gain, chump blockers, whatever we need. And then we also have Psy Master Thopterist, which is a backup plan. We're casting all these cheap artifacts. It makes a bunch of Thopters. We can cash in those artifacts to draw cards if we're trying to find Karn or whatever. Word of Invention kind of holds 
everything together. And Snaring Bridge, Chalice of the Void, give us a little bit of interaction in the main deck while keeping our opponent from doing anything, really, in the main deck. Chalice, especially good against some decks, and Snaring Bridge for creature matchups. And remember, since we just care about artifacts in an absolute sense to trigger Psy, etc., etc., uh, we can get away with playing cards like this that can be a little bit situational, matchup dependent, because even in the matchups where they're not good, worst case, we get a token out of the deal, they're an artifact on the battlefield, so they're never really bad, bad, or as bad as they could be in some other decks. Mana base wise, mostly of note here, Inventor's Fair, which allows us to tutor up our artifacts, a backup plan, and gains us a bit of life. Some basic lands in the sideboard. First off, we have a bunch of card and stuff. So we talked about Lattice. That's one of our main win conditions, just locking our opponent. We can also use Karn to snag Ensnaring Bridge for creature matchups, Torpor Orb to shut down Enter the Battlefield triggers, Spyglass for Planeswalkers, Graph Digger's Cage for Graveyard Hate, Dampig Sphere for decks like Storm and Tron, and then we have some non artifacts. Battle with the Bridge, Deputy of Detention, Give us some removal. Battle to the Bridge, also just a ton of life gain against the deck like Burn. Tap all of our artifacts for Improvise. Use all those charge counter artifacts for a bunch of mana. Maybe gain like 10 or 15 life. Unmoored Ego to shut down combo decks. Tron decks, Meddling Mage, also very good against combo in specific, where we can name uh, whatever combo piece our opponent's going to probably kill us with. And also, the other thing I love about Meddling Mage and Deputy Detention in this deck is they catch people by surprise. They don't seem like the type of cards that would be in this artifact-centric Karn deck, so people are definitely not expecting them. And that is Karn's Dice Factory for Boddard, and that's our Mucha Brew deck for this week, so let's give this deck a shot. Like I said, we've messed around with somewhat similar decks in the past, especially the Charge Counter Ramp plan, but we've never played this deck with Karn, we've never played it with Thopter Foundry Sword of the Meek, so this is a very different take on the Dice Factory archetype, so let's see what Karn can do in Dice Factory, see how good the lock is in this archetype. Anyway, let's get to the gameplay, see how it works, thank you so very much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed the video and i'll be back in a bit with a wrap up all right much brew about nothing time we are heading to modern this week playing some some karn action who interesting if only we had a ramp spell we are gonna keep this a ramp spell would be nice but utopia sprawl opponent's got the ramp on green sure and passes inventor's fair well, Spire of Industry, Surge Node. This is where we need a Everflowing Chalice, something like that, to put the counters on to get to this Karn a bit quicker. Forest for our opponent. And Burning Tree Emissary. So this looks like a Mono Green Devotion deck. Elvish Mystic. We're running it all out. Opponent passing. We draw Sword of the Meek. That's interesting. Hmm. Well, play the island. Play Sword of the Meek. Pass the turn. So, I mean, I guess we could start making Thopters next turn. We'll see what our opponent has. Nyxos. Oh, so much mana. Five mana, six mana. Primal commands our Sword of the Meek. Yeah, that is kind of what you would call the nightmare. Nightmare scenario. Gets an Eternal Witness to get back the Primal Command. Bone it. Getting in, hitting us. Down to 17. Well, we untap. We will play Sword of the Meek. We will play Spire of Industry. We will pass the turn. Do we actually get a turn to do anything? Pwn it. Eternal Witness. Gonna get back Primal Command. Do they have a land to cast it again immediately? They do. All right, so opponent gets to Primal Command again. And we're just getting time walked. Primal Command puts it on top. Hmm. Gets an Eternal Witness to do it again. Plays an Arbor Elf. Yeah. And that does it. Yeah, we're just, uh, we're just hard locked. All right. Well, that was, that is the, the, the dream draw for our opponent's deck. And it worked out well there. Had all the mana, started Primal Commanding on what, turn three? And yeah, that is unbeatable. That's when Mono Green Devotion looks like the best deck in uh in the format when it has those hands it can be basically anyone on the other hand it also has some very very questionable hands uh torpor orb hmm so do we like bring in torpor orb or do we leave it in the sideboard for karn it's probably better in the sideboard honestly i don't think we can unmoor ego 
Could try to bring in, like, Deputy of Detention. Psy actually seems pretty lacking in impact. Chalice is just too slow, I think. And they have ways to get out from under it. All right, run it like that. We are on the play, which is good. That was part of the reason things went so poorly last time. Well, we'll keep this. Not a super fast hand. We don't have any of our ramp, unfortunately. This is pretty fair. Opponent, though, running into the wrong side of Mono Green Devotion. Going to five. Well, Dark Slick Shores go. Opponent, untaps. Forest, and Utopia Sprawl. Getting the ramp on already. Yeah. Opponent passes. I'll play a land, and let's just kick a ever-flowing chalice. Pass the turn. Nick those. <laughs> oh my goodness. Seriously? Seriously? Your five guard hand is going to have ten mana on turn. Oh, no, sweet. Oh my goodness. This is not fair or realistic. You gotta be kidding. You have to be kidding. Oh no, that is not realistic. No, sir. No, sir. That is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta be joking. Oh, what a... Okay, well, yeah. Name Eternal Witness. Although, I'm of the opinion this probably doesn't really do much. That is the best five-card hand I've ever seen. Uh, now it is officially the best five-card hand I've ever seen. Opponent! Wow. Opponent gets in. Hits us. Down to 16. We untap. We draw a Surge node. Well, play an Everflowing Chalice with Kicker. Play a Surge node. Pass the turn. Yeah, I have never seen a better five card hand than that. Opponent, combat, gets in for a billion. Yeah, down to nine, makes a beast. We really need to draw land to have any shot. To get underneath, all right, Arbor Elf. Yeah, well, let's see if we can draw land or a free, anything free. Put a counter on Everflowing Chalice. Untap. Hmm. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so Surge Node. Oh, we can't do that. Hmm. Well, play Psy. Play Thopter Foundry. Make a dork. Pass the turn. Opponent. Combat. Attacks. Well, block here. Three, four, five, six, seven. And block here, block here. Block here. Drop to four. Makes a beast. Opponent passes. Alright, so we pass the turn. Yeah, pass the turn. Opponent goes to combat. So we will whir for two. Get Sword of the Meek. Sack Sword, Mega Thopter. Gain a life. Oh, are we overcoming this insane start? Sack Sword, Mega Thopter, gain a life. Okay. Opponent, big attack. Block, block, block. Go to one. Land for our opponent. Passes. I'll play Inventor's Fair. Counter on Everflowing Chalice. We want to get out of Lightning Bolt range, just in case. Sword of the Meek. Make a Thopter. Sword of the Meek. Make a Thopter. Sword of the Meek. Up to four. Make a Thopter. And this still leaves us in a position where we can whir for Bridge if we really want to. If our opponent has, like, Crater Hoof or something. Opponent goes to combat attacks well we will go back to making thopters sag the sword make a thopter gain a life sag a sword make a thopter gain a life sag a sword make a thopter gain a life do some blocking block 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 actually no let's just chump chump let's get rid of the the burning trees Block everything. The Burning Trees get rid of some of the Nykthos mana. Oh my goodness. Wow. 
I am very surprised we came back from that. Pona had turn one Utopia Sprawl, turn two Double Burning Emissary into Primal Command, put a thing on top of our deck, get Eternal Witness, Meddling Mage saved us, and our combo came through eventually. All right, do we want to change anything? I guess Torpor, uh, Torpor Orb, we want it, but I still think it's better in the sideboard. Battle at the bridge, unmoored ego. All right, run it back. We got a plan, we got a plan. Opponents on the play though, which is super scary. The scary starts from our opponent's deck are really scary. Huh, this hand is interesting. Our big problem with this hand is we only have one, hmm, one colored source, so we can't actually cast Meddling Mage or Deputy. I think we're gonna keep it. We have Chalice, and we can play Psy off Spire, and then hope we just draw into another land. Opponent, Forest, and no ramp, good lord, okay. Well, that's not exactly what we were hoping for, but Swamp Goo. Opponent, Untaps. Oath of Nizza, gonna do some digging. All right, opponent's off to a bit of a slower start, which we're not gonna complain about that. Elvish Mystic. All right, find some ramp. There's a the land. Here comes the Mystic. Opponent passing. I'll play Spire of Industry. Ever-flowing Chalice. And pass the turn. Uh, opponent. There is Nykthos. Eternal Witness just runs it out. Yup. Opponent passing. Gets it. Down to 19. Well, we untap. Land? Dark Slick Shores. Okay. Hmm. So play Dark Slick Shores. Play Psy. Play Mox Opal. Make a Thopter. Turn on Mox Opal. Meddling Mage? Hmm. The other option is just to Deputy of Detention. And basically, we could Deputy of Detention Sword of the Meek and get rid of Eternal Witness to cut back on the Nykthos mana. I think we're going on the Psy plan. So play Psy. Play Mox Opal to trigger Psy. Play Meddling Mage. Name Primal Command. Pass the turn. Well, let's see what big things our opponent has. Plays a land up to six mana. Eternal Witness Part 2. And passes. Ooh, Surge Node. Now this is interesting. This is very interesting. So I think we play Surge Node. Make a Thopter. Play Deputy of Detention. Get rid of the Eternal Witnesses. Go to combat. Attack, attack. Oh, opponent says Arg. <laughs> they were counting on that mana for Nykthos, apparently. The sideboard sneaky Azoria stuff has been pretty good here. Hit our opponent. Down to 16 past the turn. Oath of Nyssa. So opponents to the point where Nykthos just breaks even. Oh, getting rid of those. If they can kill this deputy, Walking Ballista, they can't kill deputy yet. They can play a Ballista. Yup, there's Ballista. They can kill Meddling Mage if they want, but... All right, opponent's passing. Well, let's Surge Node. Counter on Chalice. Untap. Land. Hmm... All right, so I think what we do is put a counter on Everflowing Chalice, play Sword of the Meek, make a Thopter. One, two, three, four, all right. Play Sea Chrome Coast. Go to combat, get in with our Thopters. Opponent of 14, pass the turn. What can we whir for? I guess it's just the combo and just try to Thopter our way to victory. Opponent, combat. Passing. Counter on Ballista. Ping's Deputy. Ping's Deputy. Well, let's whir. X2. And yeah, just take Thopter Foundry. Opponent gets back the Turtle Witnesses. Gets back both cards from the graveyard. And they're going to have a lot of mana next turn. This would be a sweet turn for something like Karn. Gets back both. Yeah, Ballista was a good one for our opponent. Re plays Ulthanissa. Karn for Damping Sphere would be pretty awesome. Oh, opponent has Karn. 
That's very much not awesome. Opponent passes. Island. Well, that's disappointing. Go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Down to 13. Play land past the turn. Well, here comes Mr. Karn. Pony has a lot of Nykthos mana now. Six, seven, Summoner's Pact. Huh. Okay. For Burning Tree Emissary. Gonna play Burning Tree Emissary to get more mana. Karn for Lattice doesn't just beat us, though, because we have our Thopters. Walking Ballista X2. Okay. Ping's Meddling Mage. Ping's Meddling Mage. All right, wants the Primal Command. Whoa! Okay. Yeah, that's that's not good. Another Nykthos. Ten mana. Yeah, that's a lot of manas. Our only hope is that our Thopters can somehow get there. Primal Command. Gain seven life. Search for a creature. Okay. Eternal Witness. We might be good, because they do have to pay for this pact on their upkeep. And that's going to require not having Nykthos available, I believe. Or only available on their upkeep. And we could just draw Karn. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We have enough mana where if we... Hmm. Just going to put Chalice on top. All right, so we tap Chalice. Go into our combo. Um... Sack Sword of the Meek. Make a Thopter. Get back Sword. Sack Sword of the Meek. Make a Thopter. Get back the Sword. Sack Sword of the Meek. Make a Thopter. Get back the Sword. And then... Sack Everflowing Chalice and Surge Node to draw a card. Opponent gains some life. No attacks. Well, go back to the combo. Sack the sword, Thopter, life. Sack the sword, Thopter, life. Sack the sword, Thopter, life. And sword, Thopter, life. Untap, draw Everflowing Chalice. Well, go to combat, all attack. Opponent takes their beats. Everflowing Chalice, make a Thopter. And yeah, pass the turn. Opponent's gotta pay the Piper eight mana. Okay. Do they have an instant? No instant. Okay. Feel good. Feel good about where we're at. Opponent. That pact was punishing. And opponent says they forgot about the pact. And I think that might let us steal this win. Wow, what a game. Opponent plays a land, but no Nykthos. That's only three mana. And opponent scoops it up, and we get the GGs. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, no car in that game, but still a good performance for our deck. Wow, I'm still just... That game two-hand for our opponent with five cards, insane. It's, it shows you the power of Mono Green Devotion. Like, its good starts are about as good as it gets in all modern. Whew, all right. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right. Macha brew about nothing time. We are playing Karn's Dice Factory in modern, and this hand's interesting. We have our Surge Node. Yeah, we can try this. Land Surge Node. We wouldn't mind just drawing a land. Worst case, next turn we can, like, play Cornucopia for free, start putting counters on it. If we draw a land, it's even better, because then we can, like, hard cast Chalice, and put a counter on it, and play a Sword of the Meek, and then be set up to Thopter Foundry. Scalding Tarn for our opponent. And passing. Well, come on! Land off the top. Karn. All right, so this means we just cast a Cornucopia for zero. And, yeah, pass the turn. Start slowly building up the mana. I mean, it's like we've hit both of our land drops, basically. Just in very weird, janky form. Steam vents for our opponent. And... Island. Thing in the ice. Well, thankfully, we don't have any creatures. Although, that will kill us eventually, if we don't find a bridge. Uh, so counter on Cornucopia. Opponent, passing. And eh, let's see what we draw. Oh, we do draw a bridge, but we can't cast it yet. All right, so we Everflowing Chalice with Kicker of one. Pass the turn. Keep building up the mana. Uh, opponent's deck probably has a braid in it, I would assume. Steam Vents, untapped. 
and passing. Well, surge node, counter on cornucopia, untap cornucopia. Hmm. Well, let's surge node, counter on ever flowing chalice, play cornucopia, x1. Opponent ops, counter off thing in the ice, and then play sword of the meek. Pass the turn. All right. All right, all right. Let's see what our opponent can do. Don't care about Blood Moon. That's the upside. Opponent. Lightning Bolt. Counter off thing in the ice. I mean, I guess if we literally die this turn, that would be bad. Next turn, we can get down the bridge. Oh, boy. Bolt, bolt. Okay. Well, the fear of straight up dying this turn seems realistic. Island. Opt. Flips thing in the ice. So we're taking seven for sure. To the bottom. Opponent. Combat. Gets in. Hits us. Down to seven. Passes. Another Karn. Huh. One, two, three, four, five, six mana. Okay, so... Step one. Surge node. Counter on Cornucopia. Step two. Ensnaring Bridge. Step three. Thopter Foundry. Step four, sack the sword, get a thopter, go up to eight. All right. Well, now we got a couple layers of protection. A braid is still worrisome. Opponent. Snapcaster for bolt. I guess enough snapcasters and bolts will also get us eventually. Bolts the thopter. All right. All right. No braids, no cryptics, nothing to deal with this bridge. Our bridges. Oh, they have cryptic. All right. Sure. Yeah. Well. We put up a good fight with a one land hand. It didn't actually win us the game, but we did put up a good fight. Ha, uh, okay. Opponents playing the Phoenix deck, blue red control, something like that. They're gonna be able to bring in a lot of answers. Cryptic is a good answer to our ensnaring bridge. That's for sure. So uh, we know there's bolts. Do they cut the bolts? Probably not. We can bring in Graph Digger's Cage. We can bring in deputy of detentions i guess go down a sigh a clock of omens and i guess one more sigh well, let's run it like that Sigh's a little weak to thing in the ice flipping we get to play first chalice would be sweet well all right surge node dot hand one land surge node blah 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 well spire of industry surge node pass the dirt uh, opponent Flooded Strand, Cracks Flooded Strand, Island, and Serum Visions. Getting things set up for the future. Bone and passing. A land would be pretty solid. Were of Invention. We're a little light on colored mana for that. So play. Ugh. All right, yeah, just cast Everflowing Chalice. Put a counter on Everflowing Chalice. Chalice plays Surge Node. We are doing this the not easy way. And the please don't have artifact destruction way. Pass the turn. Seam vents. Undept. And there goes the mana. And life is sad. Oh, life is super sad. Well, we're seeing the, the downside. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, there are things that blow up artifacts in the modern format. Opponent passes. Land. All right, is a land. That's, like, semi-helpful. We get to play Thopter Foundry. Except we're still really light on mana. Really, really, really light. Pass the turn. We really need more, another Everflowing Chalice, or even better Astral Cornucopia. We need one of those. Opponent. Seriously? All right. A Braid Tribal <laughs> for our opponent. Ouch. Opponent passes. Uh, more lands? Well, I mean, we got to try. If they encounter it, it's really rough. Cornuc okay, Cornucopia resolves. Counter on Cornucopia. Counter on Cornucopia. Cornucopia. Play Core Tapper. Pass the turn. Okay, that was the draw we wanted. If they could... Ugh. If this is Snapcaster Braid, oh boy. The tears are going to flow. Opponent ops. To the bottom. Untaps. No more braids. Please. Please, opponent. You've done enough. We've been abraded. Island. Oh, sweet. Mother of mercy. 
<laughs> oh, we can't catch a break. Yep. Well, a braid. It's turn, turn four, and we've been abraded three times. All right. Well, play ever flowing chalice. Hmm. Do we kick it? One, two. All right. Let's think about this. One, two, one kicker. But then we got to activate, 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 activate. Karn. One, two. Tap three. Yeah, I don't think we can. We just have to cast it. So cast Everflowing Chalice. Put a counter on Everflowing Chalice. Put a counter on Everflowing Chalice. Put a counter on Everflowing Chalice. Do we even set? Like, we can sack it, we can play Karn, but what do we even get? Nothing great. But if we don't play Karn, yeah, I think we just pass. I guess we could have left up our Core Tapper. Pass the turn. If this is a braid number four, <laughs> I can't, my heart can't handle an opponent. No, no, I'm gonna, no. Flooded Strand cracks it. Okay. Steam Vents, untapped. Thing in the ice. Well, that is not a braid. That's a win. Electrolyzed Core Tapper. All right, so counters on Everflowing Chalice. All right, five, six, seven mana. Opponent. Getting in for two. Hits us. Down to 60. And passes. Sword of the Meek. Hmm. Well, counter on Chalice. Counter on Chalice. We still don't have double blue for War of Invention. Chalice. Karn. Take down Karn. For Bridge. Play Bridge. And pass the turn. Okay, okay. That wasn't horrible. Opponent, Serum Visions. Getting ready to flip the thing in the ice. The other problem with flipping thing in the ice is thing in the ice bounces Snapcaster, which then potentially lets our opponent abrade again, which is not good. We'll see. Scalding Tarn. Opponent. Hits our face. Okay, they must have a lightning bolt for Karn. Blue Source would be super nice. Yeah, lightning bolt takes down Karn. Opponent, passing. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Well, play Sword of the Meek. Yeah, this mana situation is problematic. Counter on Chalice. Counter on Chalice. Or, yeah, pass the turn. Oh, uh, the old double War of Invention. Only two blue source plan. Not feeling very comfortable with this thing in the ice. About to flip. Not this turn, though. Opponent. Getting in. Hitting us to 12. Passing. <laughs> oh, we're going to have all the colorless mana. All the colorless mana in the world. Okay. Uh, play Core Tapper. And I don't even think we add more. There's not really a reason to add more counters. We have enough counters on Everflowing Chalice to do literally anything we could possibly do. I guess we should have equipped Sword of the Meek, but eh. Opponent Greg Scalding Tarn. Yeah, this has been a very weird draw. Opponent untaps. Land. Goes to combat. We would snap block Snapcaster if we get a chance. Opponent passing. All right. We untap. We draw. Okay. That is a blue source. Play Spire of Industry. Pass the turn. Okay. That is part of what we were hoping for. Opponent cracks Flooded Strand. Gets an island. Untaps. Opt. You know, charge counter on Chalice. The question is, what else does our opponent have in their hand? They can Snapcaster a Braid. Do they have a counter for War of Invention is actually the biggest question. If they do, we're probably dead. A Braid's the bridge. Yup. Opponent goes to combat. All right, let's see if there's a counter. Were for two. Get Thopter Foundry. Okay, Sag Sword of the Meek. Do they have Graveyard Hate? Oh, okay, that's good. Get back the sword. Sag Sword of the Meek, get it back. Sag Sword of the Meek, get it back. Sag Sword of the Meek, get it back. 
And now we're hopefully good. Actually, yeah, we gotta keep going. Sword of the Meek. Up to 15. Wow. Are we gonna get a braided X4 very early in the game and still win with this deck? That would be very impressive. Sack. Get it back. 17. One more. Sack it. Up to 18. Uh, chump. Thing in the ice. Opponent. Thing in the ice number two. Okay. Opponent passes. Chalice of the Void. Well, Chalice on one. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent down to four. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. I think we got there. Through four of braids. Scalding Tarn. Opponent did flit out a bit. Goes to combat. No attacks. All right, well, we do what we do, which is make a bunch of Thopters, gain a bunch of life. I guess our opponent can probably Cryptic is what they're thinking for a turn to stay alive. A little bit slow with the mana floating, but it is working. We are gaining a ton of life. Sack, sack, sack. 22, 23, 24. And this is a lot of Thopters. 25, 26, 27, and 28. All right. And I mean, I guess we do this too. Untap. Sigh. Go to combat. Do you have a cryptic? Tap draw. Counter off thing in the ice. Sure. And we will pass the turn. Crack Scalding turn down to three. Gets a land. Untaps. Opponent. Combat. No attacks. <sighs> All right, we got to do this again. I mean, it is correct. This is just what we have to do. Gaining life, making thopters, wasting time, but if our opponent finds an answer, we are going to want as much life as possible. I wonder if there's any argument to, hmm, to putting a counter on Chalice up to two. I'm kind of tempted to. That would stop a Snapcaster. Hmm. Yeah, put a counter on Chalice. Untap. Combat. <laughs> opponent has another cryptic. Hmm. Oh, this game. We can't whir for anything that's that good. Well, all right. I guess we do this again. <laughs> Thopter Sword Life. Thopter Sword Life. What a weird match. Thopter Sword Life. Because they're going to flip the thing in the ice. And that's going to bounce all these Thopters. We do have enough life that we're not just going to die, but... Thopter, sword life. <sighs> this is a combo that's a little easier paper. This isn't a particularly slow combo, but it would be so much easier if we'd be like, all right, we got 10 mana, we're going to do this 10 times, we got 10 Thopters, thank you very much. <laughs> but we got to click through each bit. Thopter. Yep. And again... Up and again. Well, up to 49. Unfortunately, our opponent had double cryptic to not die. Taps everything. Well, we replay Everflowing Chalice. And yeah, pass the turn. Opponent. <laughs> have they run out of cryptics yet? How many have been used? Two. Opponent. Combat. Attack. Um, yeah, Megathopter, gain a life, chump. We might have to stop making Thopters because of time. Opponent has Anger of the Gods. Okay, counter off thing in the ice. Kills our Thopters. Sure. Well, counter on Chalice, counter on Chalice. Sex Sword, make a Thopter. Sex Sword, make a Thopter. Untap. Go to combat. Swing. Opponent. You got a spell? Oh! Okay! It never flipped, and we got there, and that was absurd. Wow! Wow, 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 wow. All right, that was very good. Uh, yeah! Okay! So, we managed to beat four of Braids, and three of them came on the first four turns. Turn two, turn three, turn four. It was a braid, a braid, 
Snapcaster of Braid to keep us on like one mana forever, but our deck managed to fight through it. Okay, that was good. That was very good. Meddling Mage seems sweet, but there's Lightning Bolt still. Ugh. The same is kind of true of Deputy. Deputy just might not be worth it. Maybe Meddling Mage is just better? It still gets bounced by Thing in the Ice, but... Oh, we really need Karn. Karn... Someday we're going to assemble the Karn lock on, like, turn three or something, and it's going to be amazing. Yeah, let's go up a... Oh, let's go up a Meddling Mage. And I don't actually think we want Graph Digger's Cage. I don't think our opponent's actually playing Arclight Phoenixes. We... That was a long game, and we did not see an Arclight Phoenix, so... Eh, okay. This is a hand that doesn't have fast mana, but it does have an Ensnaring Bridge and a Thopter Foundry. Island for our opponent. Serum Visions. So best draw, Astral Cornucopia, or Everflowing Chalice would be good. Chalice would also be interesting if we get it down quick enough. Well, there's Chalice. So, Seachrome Coast, Surge Node, and, yeah, just run out Chalice while your opponent's tapped out. I assume they have more counters after sideboarding. Uh, opponent. Flooded Strand. Cracks it. Grabs an island. And Relic of Progenitus. Interesting. All right. Opponent passing. Well, we untap. Play Spire of Industry. Counter on Chalice. Core Tapper. Pass the turn. Opponent ups. Well, mana production is getting there. Scalding Tarn for our opponent. And there is Thing in the Ice. Okay, opponent. Passing. Well, charge counter on Chalice. Charge counter on Chalice. Ensnaring Bridge. Ensnaring Bridge. Pass the turn. Opponent cracks Scalding Tarn. Steam Vents tapped. Yup. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Opponent. Thing in the Ice Part 2. Ugh. Steam Vents. Untapped. Opponent. Pass it. Well, Counter on Everflowing Chalice. Sword of the Meek. Thopter Foundry. Alright. Opponent's got a remand. Counter's off Thing in the Ice. Counter on Chalice. Pass the turn. Huh, this is very interesting. We're getting to the point where we could just Karn Lock if, we, if nothing goes wrong. Relic sacked. Okay, opponent. Looking for action. Opponent. Passing. Five, six, seven, eight. All right, let's just play Thopter Foundry. Opponent has another remand. Well, play Astral Cornucopia. Put a counter on Astral Cornucopia. And, yeah, our mana, our colored mana situation is weird. Pass the turn. See what happens. Lightning bolts are face. Oh, this is scary. We're down to 15. If they can lightning bolt again and answer ensnaring bridge, they can kill us here. Sulfur Falls. Karanos. Okay. That is an interesting problem. Huh. What do we do about that? Does that beat us? All right. Opponent's passing. Well, counter on cornucopia. Untap. Counter on Cornucopia. Thopter Foundry. Pass the turn. All right. This is interesting. Opponent. Untaps. Karanos. Scalding Tarn gets an extra card. Karanos does make the Karn lock a lot worse. Because Karanos can just shoot down Karn if we down ticket. Thing in the ice number three. Timing out's another concern. Lightning Bolt. To our face. Okay. Flips a thing in the ice. Bounces core tapper. Yup. Yup, yup. And thing in the ice. And land. Opponent can't attack. Oh, back to the combo. So, step one. Everflowing chalice. Counter on astral cornucopia. Step two. Start sacking our sword. Making thopters. Can we do it without timing out? Sack a sword. Make a thopter. Sack a sword. Make a thopter. Sack a sword. Make a thopter. I think we gotta play around surgical extraction. Actually, I guess we don't, because we have Karn. So we're actually fine with surgical extraction. Make some mana. Sword, thopter. 
Our opponent's best bet might be us timing out, actually. Sword, Thopter. Sword, Thopter. Sword, Thopter. Untap. Play an island. Go to combat. Attack our opponent. Play a meddling mage. On cryptic command. Meddling mage. On cryptic command. Make some thopters. It's mostly about not timing out. That is our main challenge here. Need both meddling mages because Karanos will probably kill one. Thopter, thopter, and thopter. All right, pass the turn. What do you got, opponent? Crack Scalding Tarn to six. This is it. This is the turn. This is the turn. Are we going to pull off the wind? Gets an island, thinning the deck. Karanos, relic. Okay. That doesn't just beat us, though. Shoots down one of the meddling mages. Plays relic. Can redraw. Looking for an answer. Cracks relic. Desperation. Four mana. Shh. Whoa. Oh. And that's the game. Well, fair enough. Oh. Wow. All right. Well, ha. Huh. That's unfortunate, I would say. Unfortunate would probably be the words I would use to describe that. Oh my god. Shatterstorm. Oh. I mean, we don't know for sure that our opponent top decked that off the relic. It seems very likely because... Why would you crack the relic if you didn't need to and you could just shatter storm? Uh, huh. Well, I am just in stunned silence. Uh, I guess. No, I mean, I think we played right. I was going to say, I guess maybe we should have named shatter storm with meddling mage, but cryptic command we saw a million of and is very heavily played. Um, shatter storm is usually not played at all and if it is played it's usually like a a one of sideboard cards in some builds and some builds don't play it it's not really not really universal in the sideboard uh, i think actually more decks don't play it so yeah a uh, good top deck i guess oh lord almighty well oh uh, i really wanted to karn combo but the karanos meant we couldn't really do it because the Karanos damage, we tick down, we get Lattice, then Karanos just kills Karn, and then I guess the only hilarious part would be that would mean our opponent would wrath their board with Shatterstorm, but again, I don't think you can guess Shatterstorm there. Ugh. I thought we had that one, but uh, our storm was shattered, along with our dreams. All right. Much brew about nothing time. We are playing Karn's, <laughs> Karn's Dice Factory, also Thopter Zord, in Modern. And we're going to keep this. Only one land, but we have Surge Node to go with Everflowing Chalice. Steam Vents for our opponent. Well, that's not exciting for us. Well, play a land. Play a Surge Node. <laughs> okay. Opponent's got a Spell Pierce. What's going on in the magic world these days? What is happening? Bone it. Faithless looting. Is it charm? Faithless looting. Swamp. Bone it. Passing. I'll play Spire of Industry. Kick an Everflowing Chalice. Pass the turn. Everflowing Chalice, slightly less exciting without Surge Node to grow it, but we do have a Core Tapper. Polluted Delta for our opponent. Pack Rat, okay. The old Spell Pierce Pack Rat deck. Now we draw an island, which is sweet. So play an island, Everflowing Chalice, Multi Kicker, two. And then Core Tapper. Okay, Disrupting Shoal Exile, is it charm? Sure. Well, opponent has a lot of, lot of stuff happening. I don't know what most of it is, but it is stuff that is happening. Thankfully, I think Thopter Foundry Sword of the Meek does beat Pack Rats. Opponent combat gets in with the Pack Rat. Yup, down to 19. Opponent passes. We draw an island. 
Hmm. I'm worried about counters. Let's just pass in Werve Invention. See if we can get a counter out of our opponent's hand. And then we can Thopter Foundry Sword of the Meek. Worst case, I mean, if we're resolved, that's fine. We can get a Thopter Foundry, I guess, to go with our Sword of the Meek. Watery Grave untapped. Is it rat time? Discards a spell snare, makes a rat. Okay. Opponent untaps. Maybe they feel like they just have to go in with Pack Rat. All right. So we will... We will just Whir of Invention. Take Ensnaring Bridge. Opponent passing. Now we untap Cornucopia. And that's going to have to wait. We are going to play Sword of the Meek. Play Thopter Foundry. Pass the turn and start doing our thing. Pack Rat's not looking so hot with the bridge out. Apparently rats uh, can't cross bridges. And opponent, done, done and done, scoops it up, and they tried to pack rat us, but not gonna work there. Hmm, opponent has a million counters. Huh, a million counters. Literally like every counter imaginable, and pack rats, and some unknown things. I think we want deputy of detentions. We can go down clock of omens. And we can go down maybe one Psy. And <laughs> Sorcerer Spyglass is kind of cute. That does shut down Pack Rat. Sorcerer Spyglass going down. Hmm. Going down. Let's go one Mox Opal. Try it like that. All right. Well, that was a win. I still am not very confident against what our opponent's doing because they just had a lot of wild cards, it seemed like. Eh, all right. This hand's about normal. Opponent going to six. I'm surprised they didn't have discard. Pack Rat seems like the kind of deck where you'd want a bunch of counter or a bunch of discard spells. Steam vents for our opponent untapped. Training grounds. Gotta speed up the rats. Well, that is scary. Well, play Sea Chrome Coast play Astral Cornucopia. Pass the turn. Alright, no pack rat, please. Our hand is not really that fast against a pack rat here. Opponent. Watery Grave. Untapped. And that is a pack rat. Okay. That's very bad news. We're probably dead. Opponent passes. Well, play a land. Play Core Tapper. Well, we're going to have to find a bridge, and we're going to have to find that bridge basically immediately. I think we actually sack Core Tapper, counters on Astral Cornucopia, play a second Core Tapper, pass the turn. So opponent can discard a card for one mana, one black mana, to make a rat. I guess maybe Psy can help, just play a Psy and, and make some Thopters for chumping while we're waiting. Discards a rat, makes a rat. They are up to two twos. Opponent gets in with the rat. And we take it. Down to 18. Opponent passes. Well, charge counter on Cornucopia. Sack Core Tapper. Counters on Cornucopia. Play Psy. Play Mox Opal. Make a Thopter. Play Sword of the Meek. Make a Thopter. Play a Land. Chalice of the Void on one. Make a Thopter. Uh, all right. Yeah, we'll pay. Well, pass the turn. We are empty-handed. We're going to need a bridge. Watery Grave. Untapped. Opponent, combat. Well, I assume they're just going all in on pack rats. Attacks, attacks. We take it. Opponent can discard everything and make the rats 4-4s. Four War of Invention is good. Karn, I don't know if that's enough. Rat, rat, out of cards. Ooh, Necropolis, this is some spice. All right, we take a bunch. What do we draw is the big question. Opponent passes. Core tapper. Hmm. All right, so first, uh, let's think about this. Go to combat. Get in with a thopter. Hit our opponent for one. Then we sack... Sword of the Meek, Thopter, to draw a card. 
cast Cornucopia, Megathopter, sack Sword of the Meek, Cornucopia, draw a card, play Core Tapper, get back Sword of the Meek, sacrifice S Sword. Hmm. Actually, huh. If we don't draw an artifact, I guess it's bad. Oh, we gotta draw. We gotta draw as much as we can. All right, sacrifice, sword, mox opal draw card. Oh, oh, that's a that is a good draw. That is a very good draw. Um, all right, play spire of industry. Pass the turn. Okay, what do you find, opponent? This might be enough. Opponent goes to combat. Attacks with everything. So we block, 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 block. Actually, let's not block one. Block, block, block. We want our opponent to discard here. Discards. So core tapper counters on cornucopia. That's exactly what we wanted. Sacrifice the Thopters. Draw a card. Inventor's Fair, okay. Opponent makes a pack rat. However, Deputy Detention cleans this up. Opponent passes. Island. So play Inventor's Fair. Deputy Detention. They are all named pack rat. The natural enemy of the rats, the Deputy. Uh, yeah, snag them all. See you later. Go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Pass the turn. And we can even Inventor's Fair out Thopter Foundry if we want to. Opponent passes. Yeah, I mean, sack Inventor's Fair. Take Thopter Foundry. Untap. Play Thopter Foundry. And opponent scoops it up. Deputy coming through. Opponent was all in on the rats, but... Oh, the dice factory. No car. We have not done much carning. For being a Karn deck, we have not locked anyone with Karn. I don't even know if we've actually used Karn a single time through three matches. But uh, the deck's working. That was uh, pretty sweet. Pona had they mulliganed, but they had a really fast start with training ground rat 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 rat. But our sneaky sideboard tech that people do not expect out of the artifact deck, Deputy Detention Monastery, uh, Mentor of the Meek, no, not Mentor of the Meek, um, Meddling Mage, coming through in the clutch. All right, that was a good one. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, much brew about nothing time. We are playing Karn's Dice Factory, and, well, okay. This is a little awkward, but... We have basically turn... Well, I guess it's turn three. But we have Psy. We have Artifacts. We have Ensnaring Bridge. Ugh, Tron A. Well, this is all about Karn. This is the race for Karn. We want a Karn pretty much more than anything. That is the dream that we want to live. Well, multi-kick... Sadly, our mana isn't very good for Whirr. And Psy is probably not enough to just beat... Tron. Ancient Stirrings. Urza's Tower. Plays the Tower. And Chromatic Star. Karn. Karn off the top. Karn off the top. Seachrome Coast. Oh, play Seachrome Coast. Yeah, Alright. I guess we just multi-kick a Psy? Or multi-kick a Everflowing Chalice. Over Psy. Pass the turn. Please. Not Tron. Not Tron. No Tron. Eh, there's Tron. There is Karn. That shuts down our artifacts. Tutors. Huh. We also have Karn, but... Sorcerer Spyglass. Well, I don't think we can scoop, because if we do draw a Karn, that does... That does give us a chance. It's not a good chance, but it does mean we don't get Lattice Locked. Oh, boy. We're the all-in card deck, and we're getting out card. It's very sad. Somehow we were going to go through this entire league without drawing a... Without drawing a Karn. And card's name. It's our namesake card. We just cannot draw it. Mox Opal. Yeah, all right. 
I mean, I guess we won't scoop. Our opponent's seen our hand. Play Psy. Play Inventor's Fair. Play Mox Opal. And pass the turn. Opponent. Forest. Ancient Stirrings. What do they find? Expedition map. And... A uh, big ballista? Oh, Karn. All right. Yeah. Well, that does it. Huh. It's actually sort of amazing that we're just never going to, uh... Never going to draw Karn, apparently. It's kind of blowing my mind. Uh, all right. So, I think we just cut... S hmm. We want Unmoored Ego. Our Thopter Foundry plan's pretty sketchy against Karn. We might have to trim Thopter Foundry, Sword of the Meek stuff. Thopter Foundry, Sword of the Meek. Like, with our opponent being a four of Karn deck, that seems uh, ambitious, I would say. Meddling Mage is okay. Doesn't really beat Tron lands, but we can go down Clock of Omens. Probably go down Ensnaring Bridge. Chalice isn't the worst if we get it down fast enough. Deputy of Detention. We don't have any Pithing Needles. Well, I guess we have one Sorcerer Spyglass. We should probably bring that into going down maybe one Chalice. Run it like that. All right, come on. Let's for one once. Let's just play a Karn. Well, we are keeping this. It might be fast enough. Island Surge Node. Go. So we're going to be able to unmoor Ego, hopefully, if our opponent doesn't have Artifact Destruction. Power Plant. Expedition Map. Opponent Passing. There's a Sigh. Well, Inventor's Fair, Cornucopia. Counter on Cornucopia. Pass the turn. Four is for our opponent. Chromatic Sphere. And cracks it and Ancient Stirrings. Gets a Sanctum of Ugin. And passing. All right, we untap. We draw Mox Opal. All right, so we will put a counter on Cornucopia. Play Psy. Play Mox Opal. Make a Thopter. And pass the turn. Next turn, we probably have to unmoor to go. Opponent cracks the map, gets a power plant. That was an odd choice. Plays power plant and passes. Now we get to gain a life. We draw an island. There's nothing we can really were for, is there? Like damping sphere, but well, I think what we actually do here is unmoored ego. Karn the Great Creator. Wow, two in hand. So opponent's hand, Karn Ulamog, Scrying, Blast Zone, Sanctum, and two unknowns. They do get to draw two new cards, but all right, we don't have to worry about Karn anymore. We have them all, right? Yeah, we got them all. All right, so Karn's down. Play a land. Play Astral Cornucopia X1, make a Thopter. Go to combat attack we would like to draw a card us drawing a card would be great because then we could just lock our opponent out of the game opponent what do you got blast zone and sylvan's crying i mean if they actually assemble tron we can we can get a damping sphere if we need to we would like to just draw a card though gain a life inventor's fair well all right put a charge counter on cornucopia Sack Inventor's Fair. Hmm. What do we want? Hmm. Let's take... Yeah, let's just take Damping Sphere? We don't really need it this turn. Let's take Sword of the Meek. Play Sword of the Meek. Make a Thopter. Inventor's Fair. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent down to 15. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Earth is mine. Chromatic star. Karn. We want a Karn. Cracks it. Scrying. Opponent passing. Well, we gain a life. Island. Well, surge node. Counter on cornucopia. 
Yeah, we can't let Ulamog come down. We have to at least try to stop it. Inventor's Fair. Take Damping Sphere. Play an island. Go to combat. Attack. Sacrifice Thopter. Thopter and Sword. Draw a card. Damping Sphere. Make a Thopter. Get back the Sword. Pass the turn. Oh, no! Oh, like the one unknown card was the one card that... Yikes. Yikes, yikes, double yikes, yikes. Our streak of not being able to draw Karns is continuing. That is an Ulamog that will exile our good stuff. Okay. Opponent. Passing. <laughs> sort of the meek. Wow, this is sort of getting crazy. Hit our opponent. What outs do we have? Ulamog. We know there's a Karn coming. One, two, three. One, two. Now, well, play Sword of the Meek. Pass the turn. Mm, yup, there's a Karn. Well, alright. One, two, three, four, five. Were of Invention. Thopter Foundry. Sacrifice Sword of the Meek. Get a Thopter. This is lethal unless our opponent has something else. Chromatic Sphere. Cracks it. Opponent. Combat. Are we going to steal this? The Sneak? Gets in. Exiles all of our stuff. Sure. We take it. Down to 18. All right. Well... Sacrifice Sword of the Meek. Megathopter. 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 An opponent scoops it up. Oh, we found a way. Well, we are still really bad at drawing. <laughs> really bad at drawing cards. Really, really bad at drawing cards. But, even without our combo, we are plugging along and putting up a good fight. Somehow. <sighs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. Run it back. <laughs> oh, we're on the draw this game, which is scary, but... Hmm. Unmoored Ego, but no way to cast anything. We gotta mulligan this. Hmm. All right. We keep. Not because we're happy. Chalice of the Void. Is it fast enough on the draw? I think we go bottom. We need mana production. All right. Hers is mine for our opponent. Chromatic Sphere. And passing. We draw. Surge Node. Well, play Surge Node. Not exactly mana production, but it could turn into mana production. Well, let's see how fast our opponent's hand is. Opponent. Cracks. Green mana. Tron land. Sylvan's crying. All right. They got the nuts. And I think we're... Well, we got to hope they don't have a finisher. Or we top deck Damping Sphere this exact turn. Damping Sphere. More of invention. Can't cast it. I'll play a land. Play... Core Tapper. Play Mox Opal. Pass the turn, but this means a Karn's a-coming. Tron. Karn. Game. All right. Well, that was fun. Okay. Well, we got one more game to go. The question is not, does this deck work anymore? It's, will we ever draw a Karn? We went through a whole league, almost, with Karn's Dice Factory, and we have not Karned once. I don't know what the odds of that are. It's a four of. I double-checked our deck list. They are in there. It's not a mistake. So, all right, one more chance for the Dice Factory. Much brew about nothing time. We are playing Karn's Dice Factory, and good God, it's a, it's a Karn. I'm sure something will go wrong, but we actually have a Karn. For the first time in our entire league, I guess we drew one one game, but we couldn't cast it. But we might actually do Karn things. It's actually possible that we're going to Karn. Oh, thank goodness. It would be a little bit sad to go through a league with a deck called Karn's Dice Factory and not draw a Karn a single time. Oh, boy. All right. Unfair things are happening. Gemstone Cavern exiling a Chandra. 
Well, Seacrum Coast, you. Uh, opponent. Well, that's their only land? Okay. I'll play Dark Slick Shores. Play Cornucopia. Play Core Tapper. Pass the turn. Uh, this might go too easy. Karn is pretty good at punishing stumbles. And we actually have one. Part it. Pwn it. What are you doing? Parn it. <laughs> I'm losing my ability to talk. I'm so excited that we're finally going to card someone. <laughs> I think. Phone it. What do you got? What do you... Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, still have not technically carned anyone. <laughs> Ooh, opponent's playing Mono Red Prison. Against Mono Red Prison, what do we want? Probably, like, Deputy of Detention? <clears throat> Deputy in. Go down Clock of Omens. Go down... Chalice of the Voids. Battle at the Bridge Inn. We don't really care about Blood Moon, which is good. And we don't... We actually... This is hilarious. We actually don't really care about any of our opponent's lock pieces. This might just be a good matchup. We can definitely get janked out by a Planeswalker. And Artifact Hate is annoying. But we really don't especially care about most of the lock pieces. Yeah, we'll go down one Chalice. Run it like that. All right, opponent's on the play. Yeah, we don't care about Blood Moon. We're playing Ensnaring Bridge. We're playing Chalice of the Void. So we just don't care. Don't care, don't care. That being said, this hand actually does a little bit care. <laughs> we could use one of our mana artifacts. We do have our Karn, though. The Karn Dream, we still have a chance. We still have a chance for the Karn Dream to be lived. This has been a wild league. Opponent. Mountain. And passing. We draw... Ugh, more deputies. Well, land, surge node. Pass the turn. Come on, other colors of mana. Gemstone caverns. And desperate ritual. And rabs. Well, we can kill Rabble Master, thankfully, with this battle at the bridge. Opponent gets in, we take one. So passing test number one, thankfully... War of Invention. Well, Battle at the Bridge. Kill Rabble Master. Pass the turn. Mountain. Oh, Lord. More Rabble Masters. Well, we might actually be in trouble now. Opponent gets in. It's us. We need white mana. That's not white mana. Well, Sword of the Meek. Pass the turn. Ugh. Opponent. Mountain. Seriously? Uh, okay. Yeah, you got us. Well, that was quite the Mono Red Prison hand. They're not playing Mono Red Prison the way we play Mono Red Prison. They're playing, like, eight Rabble Masters. Which maybe means we should be keeping an Ensnaring Bridge in this deck? I guess we do have one. I guess the other one's fine in the sideboard. We are going to bring in another Battle at the Bridge. The question is, what do we cut? Hmm. Let's go down one Sword of the Meek. Ah, oh, Sword is good, though. Sword is good. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Here we go. One time card. One time let's get the dream draw. Well, okay. This is not a dream draw, but we do have mana. We have a Thopter Foundry. We have an Ensnaring Bridge. Well, land and Surge Node. Go. Karn. We want a Karn. We need a Karn. Uh, opponent. Hmm. I wonder if we should have run out Everflowing Chalice. Just because of, like, Chalice on zero. Opponent. Mountain. And passes. Well, play Island. Everflowing Chalice with Kicker. Pass the turn. Gemstone Caverns. And Abrades. Alright, that does slow us down. Opponent's passing. Well, play an Island. Play Thopter Foundry. Pass the turn. Oh, we would love to draw one of our Karns. That would be sweet. Zelferin's Void. Opponent could also have Karn. That's a lot of colorless lands. That makes me think Karn is a distinct possibility. Simeon Spirit Guide. Karn. Yeah, that's not great. Tutors from the sideboard. Liquid Metal Coating. All right. Well, we untap. Play Spire of Industry. Deputy of Detention. Get rid of the Karn. <sighs> Pass the turn. Opponent. They already used their Abraid. Chalice on zero. That is kind of annoying now. Liquid Metal Coating. Uh, come on, Karn. Come on, Karn. Surge Node. Karn. 
Spire of Industry. We can't find it. Go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Spire of Industry. Ensnaring Bridge. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. What do they find? Oh, we so desperately want to draw Karn. Opponent. Rabble Master. Yep. Gets a token. Gets in for one. Down to 20. We untap. We draw. Oh, Mox Opal. All right. Well, Astral Cornucopia. Mox Opal. Gets countered. Oh, we should have got in for one first. Untap. Do we draw a card? Do we draw a card? Will we draw a card? Opponent finds three mana. War boss. Okay. At least they can't attack, but our opponent's making a massive board. I feel like if they draw their fourth mana, they're going to have something that ruins our day. Chandra. Karn again. Yep. Opponent gets some dorks. Passes. We draw. Sword. Oh, okay. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Get in with our Thopter. Hit our opponent. Play Sword of the Meek. Pass the turn. That was a good draw. Opponent. What do they find? Desperate Ritual into another Karn. All right. So we need to sack Sword of the Meek. Make a Thopter. 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 We are getting severely outcarned. At least we can attack Karn in the air for the time being. Kills our Cornucopia. Opponent makes some dorks. Yup. And passes. We draw Cornucopia. I'll go to combat. Attack Karn. Cornucopia. Pass the turn. What does our opponent find? Opponent untaps. Draws. Legend rules themselves. And ensnaring bridge. Okay. Well, we get to kill the Karn, I think. Which is the most important thing. Targets a land. Kills a land. Ballista, no. No. They're going to be able to get empty-handed? This is not right. Opponent makes some dorks. If they can get empty-handed and we can't kill the Karn, then, then we definitely lose. Because they have Karn and we don't. And they can keep killing our lands. Boy, why is our deck so bad at drawing Karn? Even though it's got Karn in the name. Opponent going to make some dorks. Yup, yup. Passes. Okay, we draw a card. Upkeep stops that. Inventor's Fair. Well, go to combat. Karn. 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 Opponent. Uh, opponent. Hey, they are thinking over their possibilities, I guess. All right. Karn down. Hit our opponent. Play Inventor's Fair. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Can they get empty handed? Well, they probably can. Mountain. Really? Oh, this is the worst. Oh, I'm very depressed. Good lord. So we can take Sorceress Spyglass. We get back the sword. Opponent, car number million. Yeah, gonna kill one of our lands. Make some tokens. Huh. Well, Sorceress Spyglass. Named Karn. But I don't think there's a, there's any way we can win from here now, honestly. I think that's just game. Huh. Well, maybe this deck should just be called Dice Factory and not Karn's Dice Factory because apparently, uh, apparently you never draw Karn. And now Karn is shut down by Sorcerer Spyglass, so even if we do draw Karn, I don't think there is any possible way we can win this game. I don't think there's a there's anything. I guess we have another Deputy of Detention. We have another Deputy of Detention, which I guess is kind of a 
a thing to get rid of Karn. Maybe that's maybe that's our hope is to eventually draw our own Karn and a deputy of detention. But we are pretty hard locked at the moment. And our opponent's getting Karn advantage, and we are not. Huh, this has been sad. I really wanted to lock people with Karn, and it's just uh not meant to be. <laughs> it's just the odds are so slim with a four of. I'm gonna actually pull up the hypergeometric calculator. Let's uh, let's see what the odds are on this. Because a four of, the odds should be in favor of it starting in your hand every game. Or very close to it. So opening hand, 60 card deck, four of. The odds of having one in your opening hand. Okay, so I kind of lied. It's not in favor. It's 40%. But we've played close to 15 games. And we haven't just been not getting Karn in our opening hand. We've not been in getting Karn in like 20-ish draws a game. If you increase the sample size to even like 15, the odds of finding a four of are like 70%. So I feel like we have just been really unfortunate with our Karn drawing. We just have not been able to find Karn no matter no matter what it's very odd and strange and a little bit disappointing on top of it so the problem here is eventually our opponent's going to draw a chandra and once they draw a chandra we can't win although our opponent apparently having some internet troubles or something because they're taking a really long time so i guess there's some chance that we win by our opponent timing out which we want to be winning with car not our opponent timing out but all right opponent untaps draws chalice on two passes make some dorks we gain some life opponent's going to shut down our inventor's fair well, play Spire of Industry. Pass the turn. Sadly, there's not even an artifact worth tutoring up in our deck with this Inventor's Fair. Especially now that there's a Karn. I guess if our opponent ever finds an answer to Ensnaring Bridge, they also win. Although they just chaliced on two, which is a braid number. Opponent draws. Chandra's the real problem. Chandra's the card that, once they draw it, probably going to be dead. Well, we've played some crazy games with this deck. We just have not done much carning, sadly. Is there any way we can win this game? If there's literally no way we can win, I will just scoop, because our opponent's having internet trouble, and uh, it's not impossible that we win this game. It's like something like Karn into Deputy Detention, and we probably win. Um, even just Deputy Detention is interesting. Because we get to start getting in with the Thopters. So I feel like we're not in a favorable position. But until our opponent finds something else, we're both kind of in a position where we can't do anything. We will mill out before our opponent. Although this game's not going to come to milling out. Because someone's going to draw something. Like Chandra is the big one. Um, a way to kill Ensnaring Bridge is also big. Like a Shatter Storm. Or, I guess, like, Shattering Spree? Shatterstorm wouldn't be in their deck, because it would blow up their stuff. So I don't think we can scoop, because we're not drawing dead. We're drawing slim, but we're not drawing dead. If we get to the point where we're drawing dead, I'll just scoop. Because I definitely... My goal isn't to win by time. My goal is to try to complete the match. So if we... If it looks like... If they draw a Chandra or something, and we know we're dead, then we'll scoop. But until that happens... I think we just got to keep waiting, because we do have outs. Even just Deputy of Detention, Snag, and Snaring Bridge is maybe game-winning, because we get to start attacking with our Thopters. And in, it doesn't take that much for the Thopters to get there. It's only, like, just over three turns. Three turns plus one damage. Opponent, here comes the tokens. Passes, we gain a life. Opponent shuts down Inventor's Fair, which we don't really want to activate anyway. A play core tapper gets countered. But it keeps us empty handed. Pass the turn. Opponent, what do they draw? <laughs> Alright, Desperate Ritual gets countered. 
I don't know if this Chalice on 2 was the right play for our opponent, honestly. The Chalice on 2 cuts off their main artifact destruction, I would think, in a braid. Opponent passes. Inventor's Fair. Targets Inventor's Fair. We gain a life. Psy is actually interesting. Psy gives us a way to to draw some cards, potentially. I don't know if that's wise or not. Opponent. It also lets us get rid of this... Hmm... Really? Opponent, top deck Chandra, Torch of Defiance. Going to kill our Psy. Well, sack, sack, draw a card. Battle at the bridge. Here comes the war bosses. Yup. Opponent passes. We draw. Anything relevant? Targets Inventor's Fair. I'll play Surge Node. Battle at the bridge, the Rabble Master. I mean, I guess the other thing is we are at 42. And Chandra is down to one. So they're still not super close to just killing us, although they do get to see two cards a turn. Somehow our opponent's drawn... Okay, Anger of the Gods. Legend Rules card. Takes up Chandra. Opponent, passing. We gain a life. All right, pass the turn. Well, we get to whir. I don't know what there is to whir for, but we do get to whir. I guess we can whir for something that can maybe attack. Opponent hits a land. Rabble Master. All right, well, it is whir time. Take. Boy, we still have all those Karns in our deck. Um, we still have two size. Yeah, we'll just take Astral Cornucopia. Opponent makes a dork, can't attack. We draw. Gain a life. Maybe we are going to end up just winning by time. We're still not dead. We still have Deputy of Detention as a thing we could draw. Play a land, pass the turn. We still have four cards, four cards. Something like Psy to sacrifice our Sorcerer Spyglass into card would be good. We have good things. Opponent. They also have to still kill us. Ticks up for mana. Chalice on three. Well, that does cut off more of our outs. So... <sighs> Uh, I don't know if we should be scooping here or not, honestly. Oh, okay. We finally drew a Karn. Although, unfortunately, there is a Sorceress Spyglass. So our Karn doesn't do anything, and we can't get rid of the Sorceress Spyglass because they just chaliced on three. Uh, well, I guess we're just going to play this out. I don't know. We've been playing for so long, another Rabble Master gets countered because our opponent is putting chalices on everything. We gain a life. Well, maybe we're getting the timeout win. We finally played a Karn, but we play the Karn at a point where we can't even use Karn. Well, I guess it's a Karn, finally. Like, score! <laughs> opponent takes up Chandra, gets an Ensnaring Bridge. Like, Chandra's going to ultimate, but I'm not actually sure Chandra ultimate is going to be able to kill us cast the ensnaring bridge for no reason passes we gain a life well oh there's our deputy too hmm that is so depressing we drew what we needed we just did not draw it before our opponent drew things but well it looks like we're gonna get the timeout win not the win we were hoping for but I'm imagining it's going to be enough. We're at 39. Our opponent has to cast a lot of spells, even after ultimating Chandra. If they can kill, if they can kill our ensnaring bridge. Uh, one, two, three. Well, cast a big ever-flowing chalice. Oh. Multi-kicker means it still gets countered. Oops. Opponent. <laughs> Takes up. Chandra, Crate Maker. Well, that would be awesome if you hadn't put a chalice on too. <laughs> uh, I think our opponent unintentionally like locked themselves out of this game by being so aggressive with their chalices. It has locked us out of their game, out of the game, but it also has locked them out of the game. And our opponents played slower because of bad internet. So it looks like we're gonna get the Karn win, kinda. 
The Karn win where no one could do anything. Emblem Chandra, sure. But we're at 41. There's an ensnaring bridge. Five damage. Fine. And it looks like our boat is going to end up timing out. Good God, this game. Down to 36. We go up to 37. We draw Core Tapper. We cast it. It gets countered. We pass the turn. Opponent has 30 seconds to kill us from 37. Takes up Chandra. It's a Legion War Boss. They can cast it for damage. I guess they are potentially getting two spells a turn. 20 seconds. Well, I didn't want to win by time, but at this point, I think we are going to win by time. The other thing is our opponent is way behind us um, card-wise now, which is another, another potential pathway to victory. Although, if the game kept going, I assume the Chandra emblem would get it done. Opponent, Chandra, Chalice... Our opponent would have, it's kind of funny, our opponent would have easily won this game if it wasn't for <laughs> their chalices. What a league! I think this might break a record for the longest league we've played, or at least be close to it. So we finish off with a good god, 3-2, and two, a very weird and rocky and just strange league of magic uh so we finish with a three and two which of course means we do have a treasure chest to open and maybe this will be a karn we could use a karn we, we you could have used a card this entire league i have to say while the deck was functional we get a flea slay main lion yeah we play that in budget once and mephitic uh mephitic ooze Plus one, plus one for each artifact you control. Five minutes, zero five. When it deals combat damage to a creature, destroy it. Can't be regenerated. So basically, zero five death touch pumps power based on artifacts you control. All right. Okay. Well, uh, not a great treasure chest and just a strange league. The deck is sweet, but we just did not get the draw the nut draws with Karn. We did not get any crazy Karn draws. We actually, I believe, did nothing with Karn all the way till our last match. I think that was the first time we had a Karn on the battlefield. It was our very last game of our last match. And then, like, it did something by shutting down some of our opponent's artifacts, but it didn't actually do anything because we had to put a pithy needle on Karn, as awkward as that is so we never actually got to lattice lock anyone although uh we did see other people be able to do that we saw the green tron deck was pretty effective with their karn they never actually lattice locked us but they would have if the game kept going so huh well i guess that's a uh, wrap-up stuff to talk about but good god that was a weird one with karn's dice factory that's for sure Whew. so what do we learn about cards dice factory in modern and good lord was that one of the longest strangest leagues we have played in a really long time so we technically ended up going three and two and i actually think three and two is probably about what we deserved so uh, it comes with a bit of an asterisk going both ways our last match against the mono red prison deck with Karn, we would have most likely lost that. Almost guaranteed to have lost that if our opponent didn't time out. Uh, I guess there's some chance that our opponent would have never been able to kill us, even with their Chandra. It seems unlikely. They had like 20 cards left in their deck and a Chandra ultimate, although we were at like 30-some life or something because we had gained so much life. So that was a really weird one. And uh, if the game went to its conclusion and there was no clock, we probably would have lost. On the other hand, against Is It Control... Oh, boy, was that a brutal loss. We played a crazy, long, grindy, close match. We got right to the point where it felt like we were going to win. Our opponent had one turn. One turn to do something. They draw Relic of Progenitus, crack Relic of Progenitus, four mana left, and the card they drew, apparently, was Shatterstorm. And Shatterstorm just beat us. It blew up our Insteri Bridge. It blew up our Thopters, our combo pieces, literally everything, our mana. So that was a little bit rough. So I think... 3 and 2 was about right for the deck. The other thing was, we didn't draw Karns. Like, we talked about it throughout the video, but for some reason, we just could not draw cards. We finally found one in our last match. We had one game where we had a Karn, but we couldn't cast it because there was a Karanos that would have immediately killed it. And then we had another game, our very last match of the whole league, we finally drew a Karn, but by the time we drew a Karn, we already had a Sorcerer Spyglass naming Karn because our opponent would have comboed off with Lattice and beat us. So, for being Karn's Dice Factory, Karn is like the absentee boss that just, like, rakes in 
in the money from everyone else's work and never actually shows up at the office or at the factory. Uh, that was card in this league. So it was just very odd that we didn't ever draw a card. Like, the math, we even, like, talked about it with a hypergeometric calculator. Like, with a four in your deck, you're about 40% to start with one in your hand, and by the time you get, like, 15-ish cards deep in your deck, odds are pretty heavily in favor, like 70% that you'll find one. But we played 12, 13, 14 games with Karn's Dice Factory, and we just couldn't find our cards in a huge percentage of games. So I was a little disappointed that we never got to lattice lock anyone. On the other hand, the fact that we finished three and two, uh, with us not drawing our namesake card and not locking our opponent out of the game once, that's one of the main things this deck is trying to do. Like, we were still able to go three and two while running very awkwardly and just killing people with Sword of the Meeks, killing people with size, making a bunch of Thopters and a bunch of mana. So, I guess in some ways, it's impressive that the deck is named after card. We did really draw a card and the deck was still able to win. So, I guess that's uh, impressive of the archetype. So, all in all, good news bad news type scenario good news is the deck's really powerful and it can do some really crazy things uh even without card apparently bad news is there are still blowouts in the format stony silence can be very obnoxious uh something like shatterstorm as we saw or vandal blast really a blowout we did win a game i believe where we got hit by four of braids turn two turn three turn four a braid uh and we are still able to win that game so the deck is more resilient to targeted artifact hate than you'd think but the mass artifact hate, Fracturing Gush, Shatterstorm, Stony Silence, those cards can be a problem. Although, one of the nice aspects of Karn is it does give us a way to try to win even when the rest of our deck gets shut down. Like, if there's a Stony Silence, Karn for Mycosynth Lattice, still a way we win the game. We just lock you out of the game. Psymaster Thopterus, still a way we can win the game, even through the artifact hate, just casting a bunch of cheap artifacts and triggering and making Thopters and going that direction. The other thing I really liked about the deck were the sideboard cards. Meddling Mage and Deputy of Detention were literally surprise all-stars because people were very surprised by them. You do not really expect to see those cards coming out of the sideboard in this artifact-based archetype, so they were really good at janky people out of the game, essentially. Uh, being able to name the right card, get rid of the right permanent from the battlefield. Like, Deputy of Detention got rid of a lethal board of pack rats. Meddling Mage stopped Eternal Witness from Primal Command locking us. And most importantly, they were unexpected. So no one's really playing around them because they're just not cards that you would think would show up in this archetype. So I like the surprise aspect of the sideboard. So overall, the deck felt good. The league was incredibly long and grindy and weird. Uh, arguably, we got unlucky by not drawing Karn as often as mathematically we should. Uh, just weird variants where we didn't draw Karn. And matchup-wise, uh, we probably got lucky. We definitely got lucky to win the last game to the timeout. But then we arguably got unlucky to lose to Is It to Control to the top deck when we had Lethal on board. So I guess it all evens out in the end where Cards Dice Factory. It felt decent. It felt pretty decent, even without us drawing cards. So, can only imagine how much more powerful the deck would be when you actually draw a card. It locked people out of the game every once in a while. So, anyway, that's been our much approved for this week. Karn's Dice Factory for Modern. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Next week, gonna start exploring Modern Horizons, so expect a lot of Modern with new cards in the next few weeks, because I'm really hyped for the new cards in Modern. So, until then, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.